every time I hit a button. And hopefully, yes, we will be able to move forward. All right, so welcome. Um, I'm in a little different environment today. I probably look different and sound different because I am stuck at home. So I'm in our home office and uh, hopefully there won't be any uh, noises. I know the dog is here, she's walking around. Um, but uh, I'm all by myself here, so we should be good to go. Um, I see that there are still people kind of coming in. Um, one thing that I do want to mention here, and I will shamelessly plug it uh, now and at the end. I'm being upfront and honest with you all, but I think that you will be very happy about this. But um, we have opened the doors for Accelerate Live. Uh, that is happening here in South Florida in February, February 7th and 8th. Um, in 2018, and it is going to be an absolutely killer event. Um, it's really going to be focused on how do you make 2018 your most profitable year ever. Uh, not by working harder, by the way, uh, but by working a little bit smarter and shifting, shifting focus. Um, so the doors for Accelerate Live are open. Um, you can go right now. There's a huge discount on tickets. Um, they're only 395 bucks, and um, that includes everything: uh, breakfast, lunch, um, breaks. Uh, all of that is included. question box and I will uh, get to them I promise um, we will be here a little less than an hour uh, this is a um, pretty straightforward uh, conversation it's complex um, there is a lot here we could spend days on it in fact that's why we're doing accelerate live is so that we can spend two full days on um, on this topic um, so that we can and help you make more money you know if you're the owner of a company um, you need to be making money if you want to grow and uh, be sustainable for the long haul so uh, let's uh, let's let's jump into this um, so the first thing here is what is going to motivate and excite you more in 2018 now, is it going to be sales growth or is it going to be profit growth? Now, some of you will say, well, but aren't they kind of one and the same? They are and they aren't. Here's, here's the thing. What you focus on expands. And as this quote, this is the quote that I've got on the screen by Marcus Buckingham says, remember what you focus on expands but results will follow focus. Results will follow focus. So if you focus on sales growth in 2018, then you'll get sales growth. Now, I'm not saying that you can't get sales growth and not get more profit. Please don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is, make at least for me, I think the focus should always be on profit. Now, for the longest time, my ego drove me to, you know, I built a company that ended up doing over $11 million a year in home improvements. Um, but guess what? I didn't make the kind of money that I should have made on that kind of sales volume. I would have been much better off being focused on how do we make the business that we've got more profitable more profitable. Now, personally, this is something that me and my business partner, Addy, have focused on for the last couple of years. Now, we're not a huge company, 
but we're a very profitable company. Why? Because we, you know, look, I love the top line, but I love the bottom line. I mean, it gets me, that's what gets me excited. And the thing is, is that I see too many people in this business that are working way too hard for way too little. And I want to change that. I want to help change that. Right? That's one of my ambitions, if you will. That's one of my goals. And that's why we do the Wealthy Contractor. We do the podcast. And that's why we do these trainings. And that's why we do the speaking events. And that's why we're doing Accelerate. Because you guys work too hard to not maximize the profitability and the value of your company. So again, I'll ask you, in 2018, where is your focus going to be? Is it going to be growing the top line or is it going to be growing the bottom line? Now look, growing the bottom line may include growing the top line. It may, it may not. In some cases, believe it or not, in some cases, growing the bottom line happens by lowering the top line. <laughs> Do less volume, but make more money. Now, for a lot of us, that's very counterintuitive. It's like, well, wait a minute. How can I sell less, but make more? You can. It happens. It's, it's, it's all in the way that the business is set up, and it's all in the way that the business is engineered. The profit is engineered. Okay? So a couple things about profit. So number one here, you know, anytime that you're in this environment, me and all of the kind of people that I work with, my clients, profit is not a dirty word. It is not. And, you know, regardless of what you may think of, you know, politics, I'm happy that we've got somebody that is not ashamed of profitability, that makes profitability a bad thing, okay? Now, I'm not crazy about the messenger, but I do like the message, right? So profit is not a dirty word. In fact, it's the reason why we are in business because without profit, none of the other stuff that we want to get from our business is possible. It's not available to us. So profit is essential. Now, one of the things, and you've heard me say this before, if you've been on any of the podcasts or if you've seen any of the articles that I've written, but there is a minimum acceptable net profit number. Okay? And just let me put it out there so that you'll kind of see where we're going with it, with all of this. And that is 10% percent of revenue. Now, I'm not saying that that's your max. I'm saying that's your minimum. I know companies that are in the 15, 16 percent range. In fact, I know a company, in fact, the owner of that company is going to be speaking at Accelerate that's getting 18 to 20 percent on almost five million dollars in sales. He makes more on almost five million. He's not even at quite at five million. He makes more at $5 million than the majority of $10 million companies make. Makes more at five than the majority of 10. Now, what's kind of cool about that, right, is one, you probably have much happier customers, right? Number two, you serve less customers, so you have a lot less liability. You have a lot less risk. You have a lot less overhead, right? Now, this is not the winning formula for everybody. You have to pick the formula that's right for you. But here's what I will tell you. If your plan is to do $3 million, let's say, in 2018, and you've done all of your budgeting and all of your numbers, and after you get paid, I'm talking to the owners now, after you get paid for every job that you do in the business, 
the minimum net that should be left over is $300,000 left over after you've paid your salary, after you've paid all of your materials, after you've paid all of your people, your bottom line number, profit number, should be on a $3 million company at least $300,000, okay? Now, without this money, without that money, how are you gonna grow your business? How are you gonna grow your business? Because if you're not hitting your right, if you're not hitting the right margins, then how are you going to effectively market? Right? There's a lot of competition out there. You have to be marketing your company. You have to be on the internet. Right? You've got to be getting reviews. You've got to be um, talking with your past customers. You've got to be doing shows and whatever it is that you do to generate leads for your business, you need to have money in order to do that. And one thing I will tell you is if you want to dominate a market, now not everybody does, but if you do, you have to outspend everybody else and outmarket everybody else, right? And the more money you can spend to buy a customer, the more advantage you have over all of your competitors. Okay, think about that for a minute. The person, the company that can spend the most money to buy a customer and still be profitable, right, has an extreme advantage over everybody else. People, people, this is a people business. You need people to sell, you need people in the office, you need people to install, you need people to market, people, 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 right? Now, one of the things we all know is that we are in a tightening labor market, meaning it's gonna get harder and harder to find good people. Now, a lot of the times too, good people are working for other companies. They've already got jobs, right? It's kind of the irony of the whole thing, right? is you want to hire great people, you place an ad, and the people most of the time that are responding are the people that are either unemployed or unhappy with where they're, with where they're at. Now, if they're unhappy for the right reasons, great. But if they're unhappy for the wrong reasons, we're getting scraps, right? And so that's why it's tough. But you gotta be able to pay, and you gotta be able to pay well so that you can get the best people. This is a people business. You get the best people, you put them in the right seats, and you can do, you can do anything with your business, right? But if you're not profitable enough, you can't hire those best people. And the people that are profitable enough, they're gonna hire those best people, and then they're gonna eat your lunch. That's just how it works. Here's a really important one. You won't be able to give your family the rewards they deserve. So you've seen me talk before, you've heard me talk about stakeholders. There are stakeholders in your business, right? So if you are the owner of your company and you have a spouse and you have a family at home and they may not be involved in the business, but guess what? They're stakeholders in that business. They have to deal with you when you have a bad week, a bad month, a bad year. They feel the effects of that. They also get to share in the rewards. If you have a good week, a good month, a good year, they get to share in that, right? Without the right profit, you can't give them the rewards they deserve because you're not the only one that's taking on risk. You're not the only one that is having to sacrifice. They are too. If you're out running leads at seven, eight o'clock at night, right, and you're not seeing your kids, Right? They don't deserve that. And then you won't have a solid foundation that you're going to need in order to make it in the next 10 years. So business is not going to get easier in the next 10 years, over the next 10 years. And at some point in the next 10 years, look, 
you know, I, I'm not a doom and gloom guy. I'm a realist. Business goes in cycles, right? We're on a good one right now. But you got to do everything you can do right now to set yourself up. So when it dips, when it goes to the other side, which it will, it will, don't, you know, let's not fool ourselves into thinking that it's not, that you are not one of the companies that is going to go away. Right? We saw it. Most of us that have been in business for more than 10 years saw it, and it was ugly. Now, I'm not, I don't think it's going to be that ugly again, but when it does turn, it's not going to be money in the streets like it is now, right? And you have to be prepared for that, and there's strategies for that, okay? So when we start talking about how to make more money, one of the concepts that I love, that I learned, sorry, that I learned pretty early on was the concept of leverage, leverage. So for me, leverage is all about how can I get the maximum result with the least amount of work as fast as possible, right? Maximum result, least amount of effort, in the shortest period of time, fast, right? Leverage. In every business, regardless of what the business is, there are certain leverage points, levers, if you will, that can be pulled to increase results, to increase profitability. Now, every business is a little bit different. A dentist office, I was at the dentist yesterday. Their leverage points are different than our, the home improvement business's leverage points, okay? In home improvement, there are seven key leverage points. Now, these are about sales and marketing. These are not about, this is not a class in accounting, okay? You have an accountant for that. Uh, this is not about reducing your expenses. This is about how do you make your sales and marketing more effective so you make more money, okay? So when looking at the business that way, and we want to grow our profit, we look for what these leverage points are. And again, in home improvement, there are seven of them, okay? Here they are, okay? Number one, let's quickly go through this. Number one, increase the number of inquiries that come into your business. Now, inquiries, so we want to get technical about this. An inquiry is not really yet a lead. An inquiry is somebody that calls in or fills out a form. To me, they become a lead when they're converted into an appointment, which is number two, right? Number three is... The demo. How many of those uh, inquiries turned into an appointment and were actually demoed? That we actually got in the house to see and make a sales presentation to? Number three. Number four. Now that we're in front of people and we're making our sales presentation, how many of those did we close? Number five. What was the average transaction value of the ones that we closed, that we sold? Number six, how many of the ones that we didn't sell, whether they got stuck back at appointment or got stuck back at demo or didn't buy at that night, how many of those can we get back? My friend Tim Mush calls this asset recovery. Thanks, Tim. I stole that from you. Um, but I like it because it's an asset, right? You got a issued lead into your business. An appointment was set. You went out to see somebody. They didn't buy. How can you get them to buy? And number seven is increasing the number of referrals and repeat business that you get. Okay. Those are those are the seven profit multipliers. Now, just for 
example sake here, I'll give you some kind of typical numbers. Typical numbers for a million dollar home improvement company, right? Inquiries a thousand, one thousand. Of those, about 600, 60% turn into an appointment. Of those, about 75% are run, about 30% of those close at about 6,500 bucks. Asset recovery is of the ones that didn't sell, about 5% of them come back and buy. And repeat referral, about 10%. Okay, these are just typical results. Your numbers are gonna be different, okay? These not, your, your numbers are going to be different, but this is just for demonstration purposes, okay? So we're looking at a million dollar business here. Now, if we wanted to increase the profitability of this business, what if we wanted to double the profit of this business, what could we do? So a lot of people just say, well, I just need more leads, right? So let's double the number of leads. If we want to double our business, or if we want to double our profit, see, this is the, the mentality that gets a lot of us messed up. Believe me, I've made all of these mistakes. I have learned from all of this stuff. All right? I'm not talking to you from a book. I'm talking to you from real world experience. Okay? So a lot of us think, okay, in order for me to make, if I made $100,000 this year, and next year I want to make $200,000, immediately what we think of is, well, I just got to sell. I did one million this year. I got to do two million next year. Okay? So is doubling the size of the business, let me ask you, easy or hard? Most of you are probably saying hard. And if you're saying easy, then I don't know. It's hard. So then we think, here's the logic, okay? Then we tell me if I'm wrong. If we say, okay, I got to double the size of the business, then what we say is, well, now I got to double the number of leads. So if I was getting 80 leads a month, now I got to get 150 leads a month. Is that easy or is that hard? <laughs> it's hard, right? So this is what we do to ourselves. And then we wonder, you know, what happened? So what happens with a lot of people, by the way, in that scenario, is they, they, they are focused on that top line number of 2 million, 2 million. And they're doing whatever it takes to get to the two million. They're spending money. They're throwing marketing out there. They're hiring people. They're increasing their overhead with no real plan for how are we going to double or how are we really going to make double the money. And then what happens is you fall short. You fall short of the goal, yet your expenses went way up and you end up losing them a bunch of money. Then what? Then you got to go borrow money and then you get yourself in trouble. Okay? I'm not saying this is you, but this is very typical of how companies think about growth. I'm giving you an extreme example here, but if you want to go from two to three million next year, why? Why? Shouldn't we be focused on if I did if I did a million dollars this year? And I made $100,000, and my goal was to get it to $200,000 in profit, in profit. My contention is re-engineer the business, figure out what you can do better than what you're doing right now to get the extra profit that you're looking for. Now, that may include, and it will likely include selling more, but it also includes looking at some of these multipliers and saying, where can I get more efficiency? More, where can I get a greater result than what I'm getting now? Okay, so this is a tool I created long ago to, when I was doing more consulting work, to look at how can we take these levers and make a difference in the business. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole the, the whole thing with you here. Um, if 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 you want help with this, just reach out to me. I'm I'm happy to help with the, you know any of you 
that want to run your business through this model. Okay, but essentially what we've got up here is here's your thousand inquiries. I'm just using the same numbers as I gave you before. 65% um, of them uh, turned into an appointment. I think I said 60 before, but in this example, it's 65. 75% uh, of those demoed, so it's 488. Uh, close ratio 30, 146. This takes finance rejects into account. Um, it's got initial sales here. You'll see 129. That's after uh, finance, uh, finance and rescission rejects. Um, av uh, average ticket of 6,500 bucks, and um, repeat and referral is thrown in there. That's the difference between the 129 and the 160 as the total number of jobs, and that gives us about a million bucks in uh, in revenue. Now done properly, you know, run at the right gross margin and with the right overhead numbers, that right there, that business should net $100,000 minimum, minimum, okay? So let me tell you this, let me just say this, and this is as, as true as you are, you know, sitting where you're sitting or, or, you know, in the spot where you are right now, if you are not making money at whatever level you're at now, so call it a million, let's just use the million dollar number. If you are not making money at a million dollars, chances are really good you're not gonna make money at two. Okay, again, take it from experience, my own and working with hundreds of companies like yours. You aren't making money at a million, you're not gonna make money at two. Okay, you got to figure out the profit first, then you could go for, for the growth, okay? So the way that this tool works is down here we look at, okay, what if I was to look and improve my inquiry numbers? What if I was to improve my appointment setting numbers? What if I was to improve my close rate? What if I was to improve my average sale? See where I'm going with this? So if we look at this, and I'm going through this a little bit fast just for the interest of time, but if we were to make little improvements here, so 10% here, 5% here, 5% here, 10% here, 10% here, um, asset recovery and customer multiplying over here, by the way, for most companies is a huge opportunity that is not being tapped that is not being maximized effectively, that is not as profitable as it uh, could be. That's, by the way, where we do at G4, that's where we do a lot of our work is in, is in um, customer multiplying, and now we have some programs for asset recovery as well, for rehashing. But if we look at this, and we were to make these just relatively small improvements, I mean, what, what's, what's harder, doubling the number of leads or getting 10% more leads? We can all get 10% more, right? So by making these small tweaks and understanding our numbers, right, we've increased our gross profit by $232,000. Now, we increased our sales to 1.6 million from 1 million, right? So we grew our revenue 60%, but we grew our profit probably by over 100%, okay? And when you can do that, when you can do that, now you've got some real traction in your business. And then the job is, Let's do it again. So over the last couple of years, this is something that we've been intensely focused on, is gross margin and net margin. Our, our sales are up, but our gross profit is up by double over the percentage of, of sales. So um, double, the result of that has been a exponential gain in bottom line 
profits. Okay. So this is, this is how kind of how we look at it. Now this, I learned this a long time ago, little hinges swing big doors, little hinges swing big doors. This is a great quote. It's attributed to um, W. Clement Stone, little hinges swing big doors. Each of the profit multipliers in your business are these little hinges and done right, they can swing big for you, okay? So let me give you here, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go over the seven here with you kind of quickly, give you some tactics and some strategies to be thinking about um, here, but we're gonna dive deep in a minute on three of them, on three in particular, that if you focus on, um, next year, you can exponentially grow your profit, okay? So with, um, oh, damn. sorry, this thing just keep, every time I push a button, it keeps, it keeps uh, shutting off. So, okay, increasing the number of inquiries. All right, so this is obvious. This is how do we get more inbound interest, okay? Inbound or outbound. Actually, I should say. So, you know, um, how do we get more phone calls? How do we get more form submissions from our website? How do we get more names from shows and events? How do we improve our canvassing efforts? Whatever it is that you're doing to create leads, how can we do better? How can we improve that? So some of the ways to do it is just getting better with your lead generation effort. So for example, if you're doing canvassing, are you working with an expert in canvassing to help your teams? You know, are you hiring somebody that has experience as a canvas manager so that they handle that piece of the business for you? So what can you do? What are the things that you can do to be more effective with your current lead generation efforts, right? Increasing the number of inquiries is just have a better marketing mix. Most companies are entirely focused on how do we get new, 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 new people? Well, new people is risky and expensive. What are we doing to also go back and get some of the people that have already worked with us or maybe didn't buy from us or maybe friends of them, right? So that's incre increasing the number of inquiries that come into the business. Now, you'll notice on a few of these, this golden key, okay, this golden key. The reason I put the golden key there is because I want to draw your attention to areas where there's generally a lot of room for improvement, a major leak in the business, which means that there is probably some opportunity for improvement there, okay? So increasing the number of appointments. Now, in the, in, with our plumbing clients, plumbing and HVAC and home service clients, the, that was the business I was in, this number is a critical number, critical. What was the conversion rate between the people that inquired and actually turned into an appointment. The one thing that really um, kind of scares me when I speak with companies is you ask them what this number is. You know, what is your conversion number from inquiry to appointments? And either they don't know or the number that they know is very wrong. Here's what I mean by that. What I mean by that is, for, for example, I'll, give, I'll just give you an example. In our company, we used to get 50 phone calls on a Monday morning, okay? In our system, in our system, every single one of those calls had to be logged. Every single one. So the minute when the phone rang and the, the, the uh, CSR picked up the phone, click, they opened up a new screen on their computer in our system. And whatever that call was had to be logged. 
because for us the number that number was a it was it was huge and so increasing the number of appointments there could would have a ripple effect through the rest of the business by the way all of these have a ripple takeaway the one major takeaway they got from that from that event was um, an, a, a, a referral that we gave at the event we talked about this and having your phones answered 24 hours a day okay 24 hours a day that one thing that one little thing outsourcing has made a dramatic impact on their business that one little thing and it's all tied to this because they're missing calls right they were missing calls the other thing here is not only are you missing calls but your people are distracted not prepared the wrong person is answering the call the and I'm talking inbound here but the phone is very important in this business and if you don't have the right people banning the phones and they're not trained properly and they don't have scripting and they don't have role playing and they don't have training, you're losing money. So again, look at the correlation here. So everybody wants to get more leads, more leads, more leads. The average lead is $376, right? Let's convert more of them into appointments. So instead of focusing here on how do we just get more leads and put them into a shitty system, why don't we improve this system so that we can make this spend more uh, effective and more profitable, right? Now look, your, your job here looking at this is to look at which areas here is there opportunity in my business for me to improve in 2018? 2018 is right on the corner, by the way. We're just a few weeks away, okay, from of a new year. So your job here is to look at these seven and say, okay, where do I have some opportunity? Okay, number three is increasing the number of demos. So how do we get our salespeople into more homes? Now this may or may not be an issue for you. Right? If it's not, and you're confident that this is as good as it gets, then you look at something else, okay? Number four is obvious, increase the number of sales. And we're gonna talk more about that um, in a few minutes. But what are some of the things that you can do here? Improve your presentation, improve your training, improve your customer, um, improve, and when I say improve your customer, right, the person or your prospect, the person you're sitting in front of, what is the close rate on a cold lead? 25 to 30%. What is the close rate on a referral? 40 to 50%. What is the close rate on a repeat sale? 60 to 70%. So, if I'm in front of more repeat and referrals, I can double, double my close rate. By the way, with less price resistance, I can double my close rate, okay? So how do I get in front of more of those people, okay? Just a few strategies. Increasing job value. Now this is a golden key. Because this is an area that I see is huge, and we're going to talk about this more in a few minutes towards as we wrap up towards the end. But how do you get more money from each sale? How do you upsell? How do you cross sell? What, what is your price strategy? Have you re have you engineered your pricing to give you the profit that you need? Okay. 
Number six is asset recovery rehash. What are you doing with the people that inquire but don't make an appointment? What are you doing with the people that make an appointment but don't demo? What are you doing with the people that met with you but didn't buy? And I'll tell you from our experience and from our work with our clients, by staying in touch with these people, by having a system for staying in touch with these people, you will get more and more of them to come back to you, right? What most companies do is they're just out of sight, out of mind, they're gone, let's move on to the next one, okay? That's fine for a while, but you're leaving a lot of opportunity behind. And look, if you're making 15%, 18%, maybe you can afford to do some of this. But if you are not, this is something you could be looking at. Now, I don't know which one of these is right for you. And I'll tell you, for next year, just focus on two or three of these. You know, I mean, it would be great if you could tackle all seven of them, but you as the owner of the company, just focus on two or three of these and your business will be transformed, transformed. And then finally, oh, wrong way. Finally, increasing referrals and repeat. This is another golden key, another golden key. What are you doing to say thank you? What are you doing to follow up? What are you doing to earn the right to referrals? That means, are you delivering an amazing customer experience, right? Are they, are they excited enough about the experience that they had with you that they're going and they're telling other people? Are you staying in touch and staying in touch and staying in touch and staying in touch and staying in touch with them so that when the opportunity for the next sale comes up or the opportunity comes up for them to talk about you to somebody else, that you're there top of mind with them. This is an area, again, this is the area where we do most of our work. We have a program that essentially does all of this for you. Um, but there's so much opportunity here. And here's the other thing I'll say about this as well, now, with all of this stuff. But your, your, your business is really all about customers. It's a customer business. It's about creating customers, keeping those customers, and multiplying those customers. That's the job. That's the business. And as the owner of the business, that's, that's where your focus needs to be. Because here's what I'm going to say to you. Is earlier I said business goes through cycles. And I'll tell you, when business turns, which it will, the companies that will not just survive but thrive will be the companies that have relationship with their customers that have sticky with their customers. I call it sticky, you know? Those are the companies that are gonna survive. Those are the companies that are gonna thrive. So, every smart business owner <coughs> that I know right now is doing everything that they can to make sure that that base of customers, that base of customers is growing, and that that base of customers is thrilled with us. They've gone online and they've posted reviews. They've sent us referrals, right? Because those are the people that when things turn, those are the people that are going to support you and support your business. But now you have to put in the work. You have to develop the relationship and plant those seeds today. Okay. By the way, I told you that typical business is 10% or less in home improvement. A good target number, I'm not saying in one year, it would be great if you could do it, but a good target number is at least 35%. 35% of your business coming from your relationships with your customers, okay? So those are the profit multipliers. Those are the seven profit multipliers. Now I wanna show you something here and if you want, you can follow along with me. And again, if any of you are interested and you want to go through some of these exercises with me, just let me know. And I'll be happy to do it with you. So I want to show you what exponential profit growth could look like. And here I'm going to look at just three things. We're going to look at three things. 
Number one is increasing the number of leads. Number two is increasing our close rate. And number three is increasing our average transaction value. Just those three things, okay? Now, look, as I said a few minutes ago, you pick the three that are best for you, okay? It's not always going to be leads. I'm all for about leads, but sometimes leads are a crutch, and leads are the thing that are holding you back from growing. Not because you don't have enough of them, it's because your focus is in the wrong place. Okay? You're focused on how do we get more leads, more leads, more leads, instead of how do we make each lead that we get more effective and more profitable, or more efficient and more profitable. Okay? So, the way that this little exercise works is, and I'm using the same numbers as I was using uh, before. So, we've got 650 issued leads. So, to me, an issued lead is a lead that... Um, where the appointment was made, it was assigned to a salesperson, it was given to them, okay? So that's 650. Sales conversion on that, about 25%, gives us a net of 160 completed jobs at a job average of 6,500 bucks, gives us a little over a million dollars in total sales. Now, I put gross profit there because this is something we want to track. Some of you track gross profit a little bit differently. It's generally labor and material. Some people put sales expense in there. However you do it, it's, that's fine. It's up to you. But as long as you know what that, that number is. Um, so in this case, we're, I'm just going to use 40% as our uh, gross profit so we can watch and see how gross profit increases and changes as we make these little improvements. Um, so the one thing you want to ask yourself in terms of leads is um, do we have an opportunity to make more leads? Most companies, yes. Um, and what is a what is a number that we are um, that we can get behind, that we can realistically get behind, okay? Um, in this example, I chose 10 more per month, okay? Just 10 more per month. So we went from 650 to 770 issued leads, okay? I'm working on issued leads, not inquiries. I'm talking issued leads, okay? We run the same sales conversion on that, we get 192 jobs at the same average dollar, 6,500 bucks, that grows the business by, it, go, it goes up by, uh, to uh, $1.248 million, okay? So it actually grew the business about 20%, okay? So that gives us a gross profit increase of about 20%, okay? Nice, right? Now, what if we compound the effect? Meaning, what if we stack it? So not only did we get just 10 more leads per month, but we increased our close rate from 25 to 28%. Not huge, we didn't go from 25 to 40, we didn't go 25 to 35, 25 to 28%, right? How can we do that? Well, I mentioned a few things. You can have a stronger sales presentation. You can have better training, okay? You can have better people. You can have more of the better type of prospect to be in front of, a repeat or a referral, right? You can get focused on close rate. How do we get a little bit better in our close rate? But look at what happens to them. Now we're keeping, we're, we're, we're pulling this down, so we're keeping the 770, we're doing basically compounding. 10 new leads a month and increase our close rate from 25 to 28%. Now just doing those two things, just doing those two things, 
we increased our number of jobs from 160 to 216. So we're doing 56 more jobs. We increased our sales to 1.4 million, but more importantly, we increased our gross profit by 150-ish thousand dollars, okay? 10 grand a month, more than 12 grand a month, okay? On a, on a million dollar business, gross profit, okay? Do you think that you would make more money if you had $12,000 more in gross profit every month? Of course you would. Now let's add one more compound to this, one more. And this is how you get exponential results. And that one is the average sale. Let's say that we took the average sale from 6,500 to 7,000. Okay? 500 bucks. That's it. Just 500 bucks more. But it's 500 on 216 jobs, which takes us from 1.4 to 1.5 million and takes our gross profit up by $190,000. $190,000. Okay. We didn't make big crazy changes here, but did we or did we not just double the profitability of this company? Hell yes, we did. Maybe even better. Okay. We increased the gross margin by 190, almost $191,000. And we did three little things. 10 more leads per month, increased our close rate by three points, which is about 10, 12% improvement, and we increased our average ticket by 500 bucks. Okay, now, let's talk about one last thing, and then we'll wrap up. Price and profit. One of the areas that for the last couple of years, and, and some of you have met me through certainty, for the last couple of years I've been out um, doing um, workshops for certainty, and we're doing a brand new workshop in 10 cities in the first quarter of 2018. Um, it's called Breakthrough. Um, but you'll start, if you're with certainty, you'll start to see that. But one of the things that I see in this business that's a real problem is pricing getting pricing wrong for lack of a better way of saying it just getting it wrong pricing you know how do we all kind of come up with pricing when we start in business we call our competitors we see what they're doing and we try and do it for the same or a little bit less well the question is how do we know that they're pricing it right what if they're what if they aren't making money what you've got to figure out, pricing is really all about value to the consumer. And by the way, by the way, only a very small percentage of actual consumers buy only on price. Now, everybody thinks that it's all about the price. It's about the price. It's about the price. It's not about the price. It's that you didn't give them enough value during your sales presentation in order for them to accept the price. Okay? You didn't give them enough evidence that you're the right company. You didn't give them enough evidence that you are going to give them an amazing experience so they are not going to have to worry about getting ripped off. You maybe did not do a good enough job understanding what problem they really have, what they really need to get solved. Now, the companies that I work with that price their jobs the right way get this. They understand this. And by the way, they have a minimum threshold, too, that they will not go under. They will not go under. They will not sell a job that does not meet the gross profit margin that they need to get. Okay? Price and profit. So too many contractors price and sell jobs out of fear. This gives them the wrong margins. It's a high risk. You know, you're in a high risk business, right? You're afraid to lose the job. So you don't want to make this a riskier business for yourself. And you don't want to approach this into fear. 
you want to create a business that's so strong and, and, and gives the client, the customer such confidence that they're willing to pay extra. By the way, if price was the only issue, right now what's going on thousand dollar phone right it's not about the price it's not always about the price now in most cases you're actually better off selling less jobs at higher prices so a lot of people will say to me well you know how do you sell less jobs and make more money uh, let me show you <laughs> you can sell less jobs and you can still make more money now, again, this is an exercise, so we're coming up against the, the clock here, but this is another exercise. If anybody wants to go through with me, just reach out to me, and I'm happy to go through the exercise with you. But this is a tool I created. You find, you'll find it, for those of you that have my book, the How to Double Your Profits book, um, the tool is part of your resources that you get with that book. But look, I put the numbers out there. $6,500, um, if you look over here, $6,500, is our current sell price number sold 160 uh, our item cost is 3900 this is basically our 40 percent gross you know uh, uh, gross mark uh, cost um, so there's our gross sales there's our cost of goods sold and there's our gross profit okay so obviously if I enter the same price here I'm gonna get um, a zero difference here and if I sell less jobs, which is what this is showing, obviously we're gonna lose money, okay? But this is our starting point at zero. So let's say that we take our price and go up to $7,000, okay? Well, here's what happens. Our gross profit goes up if we, don't, if we sell the exact same number of jobs, we make an additional $80,000 in gross profit. But here's where it gets really interesting. We can actually sell 24 less jobs and still make more gross profit. Just saying, you could sell 24 less jobs and make more money. What if you went nuts? And said, I'm raising my price a thousand bucks and went to 7,500. Well, assuming you sold exactly the same amount, the same number, you'd make an additional $160,000 in gross profit. Now, you're, you're, some of you are looking at this and saying, ah, you're, uh, Brian, you lost me. This is not possible. Of course it's possible. I got clients that do this every single day. Think about one thing. Here's one thing I want you to think about. If you're doubting me, you, if you are the, if you are lower priced than everybody else, and there's one or two players in the market that you know are substantially higher than you, I will challenge you that you are losing jobs to them. Not all of them, but you are losing jobs to them, which takes your whole argument out the door. It's not true. It's in your head. Pricing is really basically all in your head, too, by the way. Because there's strategies that you can employ to make the thousand dollars more that you're charging a super value for people. Super. Right? To where they're like, I'll take it. Okay. But here's the other thing: you could sell 40 jobs less. You raise the price by a thousand, you could sell 40 jobs less and still make more money, okay? This is math, okay, math, okay? Now, here's the reality of this situation. I've done this, I don't know how many times. The reality of the situation is this. 
more than likely your drop off is not going to be anywhere near from 160 to 120. You can't, you're not going to lose 25% of your jobs. Maybe you'll lose five, maybe, maybe. But if you focus, again, what you focus on expands and what you focus on your results will follow, right? So if you focus on creating a better customer experience and come up with ways of how to give your customer more confidence in you and make them want to go and tell the world about you, right? Then all of this, all of this works. It's doable. Okay. So back to profit, which is what this was all about. With more profit, you'll have enough money to effectively market your services. You'll also have enough money to, by the way, this is not a, this is not a complete list. I'm just giving you a few bullet points, but you'll have enough money to wow your customers, to give them an experience that they'll want to go tell everybody about. Okay? You'll have money to be able to do things for your customers that nobody else can do. That's marketing also, by the way. You'll have enough money to hire great people. Great people. That's going to be the game, by the way, for the next couple of years is how do we get really, really good people? You'll be able to give your family the rewards they deserve. Remember, we talked about that earlier. They're in this with you. You'll have a solid foundation or potentially have a solid foundation so your business will survive and thrive over the next 10 years if that's your if you want to be around right and you know finally you'll be able to build real wealth for you and for your family and for your team you want your team to be successful as well That was the dramatic pause, by the way, because <laughs> I want you to think about this, right? I did, an, I did a, a Wealthy Contractor podcast in, interview with Emily Lindis, Lindis Construction, big company, great company. Emily is awesome. Um, she said something to me. You guys can go back and you can listen to it, but she said something to me that really has not left. I don't remember the whole conversation, but I remember this. She said, Brian, I have people that are retiring from my company millionaires. Millionaires. Because of the programs that they put into place in their company. How cool would that be to be able to build a company that people stay at, that help you build and grow, that help you make more money, but they retire as millionaires. How cool would that be? I'm not saying that has to be the goal, but I was really just blown away by that. How cool is that, right? Because everybody needs to be a part of this, right? If you're gonna make money, that's gonna benefit everybody. By the way, that's gonna help you attract the best people too. Because if your business is shaky and your payroll is hit and miss and it's spotty or you're not making money or you're driving around in a shitty car with, you know, with a shitty attitude and cheap and miserly, you're not going to attract the best people. If business is bad and your family is upset with you, isn't that going to impact the team? Well, if it does impact the team, isn't that going to have an adverse effect on who you attract into your business? Of course it is. Of course it is. People don't want to work for miserable people. They don't want to work in a company where there's a crappy attitude. They don't want to work in a company that doesn't have a coffee pot and can afford to make coffee in the mornings for people. So profit is key, profit is important. And, and my hope with this is, my hope with this is, is that instead of being so focused on revenue, 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 revenue is fine, but man, 
be focused on profit. If revenue is a result of profit increase, fine. But be focused on profit. So um, if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer them. I'm going to make a shameless plug for Accelerate 2018, Accelerate Live. Um, it's happening Wednesday, February 7th, and Thursday, February 8th. There is a bonus day on February 9th, which is all about designing and executing your ultimate customer experience. That's a separate fee. But the main event is uh, Wednesday, February 7th, and Thursday, February 8th. If you go to the website, uh, accelerateevent.com, A-C-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E-E-V-E-N-T.com, accelerateevent.com, there's a video there that you can watch. Um, we shot the video at the hotel where we're doing this. It's at the B Ocean Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the place is beautiful. It's right on the beach. It's got a pool. It's got two pools, but one of the pools is right in front of the beach. Um, and uh, that's going to be the site of Accelerate. Um, there are limited number of seats. A bunch of seats are already gone. We did a soft launch a few days ago. You guys saw the offer. Um, a bunch of seats are already gone. The, um, if you want to save money on your ticket, now is the time to secure it. Um, you'll save 300 bucks. Um, so uh, each ticket's only $395. And uh, like I said, breakfast is included, lunch are included, snacks are included. Um, it's going to be a killer event. By the way, you'll see this if you go look at the video, um, but there's a guarantee, unlike anything you've seen before. It's very simple. If by 4.30 on the first day, on Wednesday, February 7th, for whatever reason, you're not happy with the event, I don't care what the reason is, no questions asked, you go to somebody on my team and you say, this is not what I had in mind, they'll give you your registration money back, plus a thousand bucks to cover your travel, your hotel, and your time. Pretty good deal. But, you know, the part of the reason I did that is uh, because I know what a killer event it is and I know how powerful it's going to be for you. So um, I don't have a problem making that guarantee. So if there aren't any questions, um, I know I've run a little bit over today. Where are we? We're at 11.09. Um, I did say in the last email, I don't know how many of you saw that one, but that by 11.04 you would be richer. Um, I hope that you are. I hope that I've inspired you um, in some way um, to, really, um, to really focus on what matters in the business, and that is profit. Profit is what matters. Uh, by the way, one of the speakers at um, Accelerate, is going to be a uh, profit first certified coach um, and he's awesome and he's preparing a killer presentation that's going to help you implement profit first into your um, into your business um, will a replay link be set uh, sent yes uh, probably tomorrow I think um, will you uh, no West Coast event uh, right now, um, only um, only uh, South Florida. Look, it's going to be February. You don't want to even be on the West Coast. You want to be on the East Coast in Florida. Uh, February is the best time of year to be here. Um, even right now, I mean, it's the sky is blue. It's like 80 degrees outside. The humidity is gone. Um, but February is even better here. Um, and we're going to be right on the uh, we're going to be right on the beach, so it is going to be a cool. Um, the other uh, the other thing too is if anybody um, let me put this up. Um, anybody wants uh, to meet with us for a strategy session, um, please uh, take a look. Just answer the question for me real quick. I know there's a whole bunch of you. Um, <laughs> thanks, Max. Uh, Max says, sold. 
Awesome. Looking forward to seeing you. Just go and, and register for the event. And by the way, grab your rooms too. We have a room block at the B Ocean with a with a big discount. I think the normal rate for that time of year is almost four hundred dollars plus a resort fee. Uh, but we have it for two forty nine. No resort fee. Plus, we're buying um, uh, we're buying uh, breakfast is going to be included. Lunch is going to be included. Uh, breaks are going to be included. Oh, and you'll see it on the video, but we're going to do a fun beach bash on Wednesday night as well. So, um, um, so look, I've got the poll up. C quickly uh, make your selection on there. Um, only a few of you have responded. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Hit it. Hit the button. Would just pick one. Yes, please book my strategy session. These are all no obligation, by the way. Um, and if you want to work on um, on any of the stuff that we discussed here today, um, it's included. Uh, some of this is included in your uh, strategy session with someone on my team. Um, all right, I'm going to close this up. Not all of you answered. Fine. Close. Put the screen back up. And um, so I guess that's it. Any other questions? I know I just got a text that the contractor I'm waiting for is waiting outside. So I should probably uh, go unless you guys have any, you guys are more important than the guy that's waiting outside. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. If not, um, I hope you got some value out of this. Let me know, by the way, um, those of you that are, there's a lot of you here. Can you let me know if this was valuable for you? Um, if you'd like to see anything different, change, is there any topics you want us to cover in the coming months uh, or next year? Um, I'm going to be really focused on this on this topic um, because I, again, um, I see too many of you working too hard for too little, and I want to help change that. So um, let us know what we can do. Let us know if this was valuable for you, and uh, we've got resources that we can send you to for all of this stuff. You don't have to do it alone. So one of the big things about Accelerate is why do all this stuff on your own? Somebody's already done it. Just copy that, you know, just copy it, you know, it, does, it doesn't make sense for you to go and do this and try and figure all of this out on your own. This business is not unique. There's thousands of other ones just like it out there. And there's hundreds of them that are super, super, super successful, right? And the owners of those companies and the people that work with them, like me, are happy to share what we know so that your learning curve is not so steep. It's quick. It's it shouldn't be that hard, right? That's the cool thing about the business that you're in is there's hundreds of other super successful people in the exact same business that you're in, and you can learn from them and just copy what they're doing. Why reinvent anything? Anyway, I hope that some of you will go uh, to the Accelerate event. Uh, I hope to see uh, you guys there, and um, I will uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Um, this is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing. See you all.